This is National Educational Television, a program distributed by the Educational Television and Radio Center. Wherever I go, whatever I see, even at my own back door, I find a lot to interest me. Let's go and find some more, some more. Let's go and find some more. Snakes and bugs and rocks and leaves, games and songs galore. People and things and butterflies wings, let's go and find some more, some more, let's go and find some more. But whoever you are and whatever you see, even in your own backyard, use your curiosity. To find things is not hard, not hard, to find things is not hard. Hi, I'm the finder. You know why some people call me a finder? I'm curious about things. Uh, when I found out that I had a river almost in my backyard, I wanted to find something out about it. It's the Mississippi River. It's a very old river. I found out that it's been a highway for men and boats for hundreds and hundreds of years. Some men have been like Indian tribes going down it, voyageurs, Early explorers like La Salle and Père Marquette and raftsmen, people taking big log rafts down the river, and steamboat men, steamboat men, roustabouts, slaves, all kinds of people, fancy people. The most important person that ever went up and down the river was a steamboat pilot. Things haven't changed much, really. Pilot's still about the same. The boats are different, though. Let me show you a picture of a modern towboat. They call them a towboat, you know, but they don't tow things, they push them. They're pretty long. In fact, a good big toe like this is as long as a modern aircraft carrier. Here's a towboat way back here. It's kind of like a freight train with a locomotive at the back. Here's where all the power is. And here are the barges. Our boat had six of them. What do they carry? Every kind of thing. They carry merchandise, grain, soy, Soybeans, steel, coal, oil. Amazing thing about them is that when you get them all hooked together like this, it's really just one boat. They fasten them together so tight at these points with cables and ropes, which on the river they call uh, wires and lines. Fasten them together so tight that they can't possibly move this way, so you just have one long boat to go down the river. Well, this is our towboat, and it's tow. And here we are, right about here on the river, just below Hickman Point, Hickman Bend, <clears throat> about 930 miles from New Orleans. River we will go, but we are not alone. There's a crew of seventeen who call the Truman home. Their home they call oh, their home. Now there's sharp-eyed Captain Jesse Marks and the pilot Smokey Joe. Those are the men who steer this boat just where she has to go. Now out on the deck is the second mate's watch, four men of the crew. There's Whitey and Jack with a baseball cap, Blackie Landis too. Mickey Kilcoyne, the best second mate from up the old Mizzou. Now, Minnie Pearl was quite a girl, called everybody Sonny. And the chief engineer, Mr. Ira Honey. His engines are hot and they sure are noisy, but the engine room, 
Well, that's the heart of the boat. Here's Archie Moore, great first mate. Carlos, the second engineer. Shorty Scardino with the motorcycle boots and a cigarette behind his ear. And of course, old Tom with the corncob pipe and the stories that I love to hear. Now, there are 15 men Two women who live and work on the towboat Harry Truman. And master pilot Jesse B. Marks watches the river for them all. What do you watch? Well, you watch the buoys, which mark the edge of the road. Red buoy on the left and black on the right. Because the river is your highway. You watch the markers on shore. They show you where the channel bends. And on the Mississippi, there are hundreds of bends. The pilot house is called the Brain Box. You're on duty 12 hours out of every 24. There are always things to watch, or to watch out for. On shore, a bridge helps you to get across the river, but on the river, you wish it had never been built, because a bridge can sink your boat. Scars on that concrete pier are five inches deep, where steel barges have scraped, and downriver, the Greenville Bridge, where the Natchez sunk in 42. She's still there in 100 feet of water. Thousands of safe trips since then, but you still respect the bridge. The river looks clear up ahead, nothing but a big old harmless sandbar on the left. It was a beautiful afternoon, and I was the galley hoss. I said, Captain, what kind of a cookie do you want? Then Jesse turned his back on the river. A sandstorm. Sandstorm on the Mississippi River. That harmless sandbar wasn't harmless at all. A sudden wind blew half of it up into the air. And like the pilots say, we were running the river like a blind hog in a slaughterhouse. Visibility zero. But we didn't stop moving. We used our electronic eyes, radar. We could see the shoreline and a little spot of light. There was a boat up ahead. was over. The sandbar looked harmless again, but I'd learned something. The river is the pilot's highway, all right, if he knows the rules. Sometimes it's his friend, when there's clear water and good days. But it can be his enemy, too. It's a changing river, different every time you run it. Captain Jesse Marks knows the rules, and the first rule is to watch it. Watch it all the time. Yeah, you got to watch it. That's not enough. You gotta do something else. You gotta remember what you see. You know, a pilot has to remember every bend, landing, crossing, town, everything. Buoy and marker for a thousand miles of river from St. Louis to New Orleans. And there must be more than a thousand names to remember. You gotta remember the funny light at Sycamore Hurdle and the ferry at St. Genevieve's Bend. Crazy water off Ellis Grove and watch a buoy at Dog Tooth Bend. Run 200 yards off Cherokee Landing, past Hat Island at night. Shave the blacks, Catfish Point, to Hop Joe Upper Light. Remember the rivers as you go by. The white and the black and the Atchafalaya. The Arkansas, Ohio, and Tennessee, they join our river out to sea. City of Crystal, one called Mound, Luxora, Carothersville, Osceola and Friars Point, and Natchez under the hill. Cairo, Vicksburg, New Madrid, Memphis and Baton Rouge, Possum Point, 
Hamburg Hurdle, Greenberg Bridge, Counterfeit Rock, Apple Creek, Tea Table Light, Brandywine Island, Potato Bend, Horseshoe Landing, Paradise Light, Chopin, Pecan River, Sticks. And there are hundreds more. There's a reason why a pilot has to remember these names. Because a towboat runs day and night. And at night, it's a different river. You have to have the river in your head because you can't see more than four square feet at a time. You have to know where the buoys and the markers are for it to be like hunting for a dime on a football field with a flashlight. And on the river, there's no time for a second guess. There it is, the buoy that marks the channel. The shore looks unfriendly at night you check to make sure that there's enough water between you and those rocks. Even with a searchlight and radar, you can't see enough. You have to rely on the map of the river that's in your mind. Jess, is that true? Do you really have a map of the river in your mind? Yeah, that's right, Steve. When you get your license, you must, uh, you must be able to draw a map from memory for the steamboat inspectors and before they will I'll let you, uh, uh, grant you a license over mm -hmm. this river. Well, it must take a long time. How long you been on the river, Jess? Well, I've been on the river uh, with the Federal Barge Line for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, previous to that time, oh, I guess I had three or four years previous to that. You can't just go then to some place and study to be a pilot, huh? No, that's right. Uh, you have to have the actual experience and, and witness the river as it is in order to learn it, you uh, must be employed in that capacity, Steve. Mm -hmm. Work right up, huh? Yeah, that's right. I started as deckhand end uh, all 20 years ago for the Federal Barred Line and worked uh, about uh, three or four years deckhand and then went to mate and uh, I was mate for several years and then went on to steersman and pilot. Well, what's about the hardest thing, would you say, about most important thing anyway, about being a pilot? Well, the most important thing about being a pilot is learning to handle a boat. You must be able to handle a boat if you're going to maneuver <laughs> through these close places mm -hmm. safely with a, uh, any size tow at all. Actually, actually get so you really know your boat. Yeah, that's right, Steve. You must know your boat and you must be able to handle a tow uh, if you're going to be a successful pilot. Well, what gets me is you'd never have the same boat, really. That is, it's the same towboat, but it's hooked up to all different kinds of tows, isn't it? Uh, yes, that's right, Steve, but uh, they uh, nearly all uh, answer uh, to the uh, same sort of handling from the mm -hmm. boat. You get used to it. Yeah, that's right. That's the main thing, I guess. That's why they have you do all that work before you can get to be a pilot, to get used to it. Yeah, that's <coughs> right. You uh, become acquainted with the different duties and the different way things handle and maneuver while you're uh, standing your apprenticeship and uh, running mate or a deck in either one. You, mm -hmm. you uh, must observe how the, uh, the work is being carried on yeah. and profit. Uh, well, do you remember how it was the very first time you were ever in the pilot house and had the boat to yourself, that is, ran the thing yourself? Yes, very <laughs> definitely, Steve. Very definitely, I remember. I thought at the time I uh, got my license that uh, I was uh, going to blossom right out as a very good pilot, but the uh, first dark night uh, uh, that I was had the control of the boat completely by myself, I, it was altogether different. Uh, it was sort of like running your first solo. You was uh, uneasy and you looked around and there was no one there but you. Uh, it uh, took a, uh, a lot more doing where you <laughs> used to not need, but maybe one headlight or none at all, you needed all the lights that you could possibly get. <laughs> I know, after being up in here, when I get down and get hit my bunk, sometimes I think about it up here a good deal. Uh, W86865, steamer Dakota calling in southbound traffic above Sunrise Shoe Curtain. Excuse me, Steve. Uh, WA9171, the Harry Truman back to Dakota. Come in, Bill. Uh, what's your position, Jess? Uh, uh, Bill, I'm southbound here at the foot of uh, Sunrise Towhead with uh, six loads and one empty. Over. I'm just now passing Randolph Bluff down here. Got 12 boys and it ain't moving along very fast tonight. Uh, uh, I ought to meet you right around uh, Hatchie Bar Light. 
Yeah, I got you okay, I got you okay, Bill. Uh, which side would you prefer? Well, I'll be, I'll just stay in on the shore here and uh, catch you. I want Wesley to come down the outside, eh? Hey, okay, Bill, that'll be fine, that'll be fine. I'll catch the blacks and come on around. How's the river down below? Well, everything's pretty good shape, Jess. She's getting kind of low now and flat in the crossings. And, uh, down there at, uh, at, uh, from uh, Redmond Dyke Light on over to Potter there, you got an awful strong draft and the black buoys down there. And by the way, Jess, uh, Tennessee's behind me there about three miles. He's got about 14 barges, and if you made him for too long. Yeah, I got you, okay. Well, let's have changed the channel up here at the foot of Sunrise Tow here, Bill. And uh, instead of uh, going out to Hatch Island Bar, you come right straight on down the shore. Uh, it's kind of narrow in there. The dredge is still digging. He moves out on the red boys to let you by, and you want to kind of watch him. There's a little draft on him, and it's kind of close in there. Uh, and uh, Alice Ingram is all a few miles up above Craighead. He'll be the next thing you're meeting. And farther than that, that's about, about all the information I got this evening, over. I got you okay, Jess. I got you okay there. I'll give him a call after I get clear of the dredge there. Yeah, now, by the way, Jess, uh, I better watch that uh, crossing down there from Armstrong Lower over to the Cahoma Light there. That bar is building out there, and there's an awful strong draft on the red buoys. Uh, I'd uh, kind of watch that wind shelf down there too fast because it's uh, very easy to get on over the top of them red buoys there, over. Yeah, I got you okay, and I'll sure be on the lookout for that, Bill. I'll sure be on the lookout uh, for it. And, uh, and uh, I'll be watching that place we go down. And uh, that's about all I have, unless you have it. That's about all I have then, Jess. So I'll say good, uh, good evening there, and uh, good luck to you on your trip uh, down to there, and we'll check with you on the trip back. Yeah, okay, Bill. Thank you a lot. And uh, WA9171, on the hair trim, and clear with the Kokoda. Good uh, luck, good evening. WA6865, Kokoda, clear on Channel 4. You know, he kept saying, he'd pass you on the, what did he say, pass you on the red? Yeah, on the one west. On, on What's the, that mean? Uh, well, that, that means that uh, we'll both alter our course to the right and uh, bring our port sides together. I see. Port side. I, I never can get that straight. Which is port now? Which is starboard, Jess? Well, the port side is the left and, and the starboard side is the right, uh -huh. uh, Steve. And that's uh, commonly known by everyone engaged in... Uh, so you both pass with your work. port sides together? Then. Yes, that's right. Uh-huh. <coughs> well, there's nothing he said there. Said there's a draft off the blacks. I thought that the draft was how much water, was, how much our boat was sunk in the water. A draft off the black buoys, he means? Uh, yeah, yes, uh, Steve. Uh, uh, commonly known, that's that's the way it is. But uh, in the lingo between pilots, uh, a draft is a cross current. Oh. It's uh, usually where a channel is trying to change and uh, move down, and uh, the. Uh, the draft carries you sideways in the channel, so mm -hmm. you've got to hold up on the upper side in order to compensate for this drift that you get when uh, crossing these uh, points where the draft is trying to carry you out of the channel. Well, do you always stick to the channel? Oh, no, no. Uh, in, in high water, <coughs> it's just impossible to stick to the channel and get up the river, Steve. You, you just can't do it. You, uh, the current is too strong, and uh, for that uh, purpose, why, most all pilots uh, keep them a bar book mm -hmm. that uh, give you the heights of the bars that they've checked during low water stages or when the water just begins to recede from high water to go down and, and uh, they check them when they just start to come dry. And uh, they record that in their book. Uh, and then when the high water comes, why well, they can get farther out of the channel than, than uh, anyone else. And the farther you get out of the channel, the faster you come up the river. Uh -huh. Does everybody use the same uh, same method of getting up the river then? Well, no, ever. High water? No, no, not everyone, Steve. Uh, uh, a lot of pilots have different channels that they call the uh, uh, call the slackest water. Uh, uh, they'll vary uh, where they go and uh, what they determine as the slackest water, but they all feel that they're doing the best with their boats. Mm -hmm. What happens? You see somebody over on one side, and, and you know that it's better over where you are, huh? <laughs> yeah, I sort of look over at him and wonder what he's doing over there. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's what he does to you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's <coughs> the same. Well, you can see to it that this is a brain box, and you can see why they call it that. Let you and I go down to the engine room. Captain, I'm going to go down to the engine room, and I'm going to see Ira Honey. You think you can navigate without me for a while? <laughs> yeah, okay, Steve. I'll see you later. I'll see you. Yeah, bye. Bye.
1,600 horsepower diesels are the heart of this boat. These engines sometimes idle, but they never stop. It's on the river, the pilot needs power on tap, ready to go. And if they should ever stop, in a few short minutes, the current can throw you against the bank and wreck your toe. It's a hot job, up to 140 degrees on a summer's day. Just as the pilot must watch the river, the engineer has to listen to his engines, has to listen for the slightest variation in the rhythm or pitch. He has to look out for a click where there should be a clack and make sure that the power is there when the pilot needs it. And the place where you need the power most is a place like the Greenville Bridge. The current is tricky. The bridge doesn't give. This is the place where the Natchez went down. Struck that pier. And is down there still in a hundred feet of water. Jess, I wonder if you can tell us why this Greenville Bridge is a problem. There's a big bend up here. Could you show us that? Uh, yes, sir. Uh... Steve, there's uh, several problems in uh, getting through Greenville Bridge, and at a low stage of water, of course, uh, uh, they're different than others. But this particular stage, the current, of course, you see, runs down this particular way, uh -huh. and uh, over over in here, there's a great big eddy that you An have eddy? to yes, that's right, that you have to stay clear of it. What makes that eddy there? That means something going around and around, looks to me. Yeah, that's that's right. It's a, it's the action from the water and the current coming off of the uh, shape of this bar and hitting slacker water, which causes it to whirl and uh, will give you considerable trouble if you get in it. What would happen if you, if you get your nose in there? Well, uh, if the eddy was working strong enough, it would break your toe. It would break your toe all up and, and uh, possibly sink some of your barges. Uh -huh. Well, you go on down, the current comes on down this way, and right in this position here, along in here, we'll have to flank around this, this point because it's rather close in there, and uh, it would be impossible to steer around here with the current, of course, more or less setting you down on the bank this way. Trying to push you, you mean, yeah. trying to push you into the bank. Right? Yeah, that's right, or pushing you into the revetment along here. That bank is all revetted, and... Uh, uh, you have that condition until you get down here about Valclose Light, where the current uh, straightens out and carries you on down through the bridge and in this sort of direction here. Now, you mentioned you said something about you're going to have to flank it. I wonder if you could uh, actually show us how you're going to flank it, Jess. Well, uh, yes, uh, Steve. Uh, this model, we're, we're coming off of... Uh, of uh, Island 84 lower light right here. And we must slow our boat down in order to have uh, uh, enough headway uh, out of the boat to flank it when we get down to flanking position. Now, as How we do you slow it down? Just, just turn the engines down? Just shut the engines down some? That's right. You, you slow your engine down first and then stop them. And then when necessary, you start to back in. You must hold your... For, your for brakes, huh? Yes, that's right. You use them as as a, a brakes to stop your head when you're forward motion. You must keep the head of your toe low enough to keep it out of the eddy and also the stern high enough to keep it off the bar. Well, as you come in this way uh, on the Charlie Moore light, while well, you're getting in flanking position with your stern down towards the red boys and the head up next to shore. That causes Looks to me like we're going to go right down the river sideways then. Uh, well, you, you have your headway uh, uh, killed out pretty well here, uh, Steve, and the current is hitting you in this sort of direction. You can see as you proceed out toward the head of the toe, the side current becomes more direct, which carries the head of the toe down the river faster than the stern drops. Oh. And as you, uh, you've killed your boat out, and now you're just drifting with the current, the current carrying 
the head of the toe faster than the stern, and so the toe is gradually falling around to take the shape of the shore Looks below. Looks to me like this is why you have to know your boat, like you were saying over there. Well, you must be able to handle a boat. As I said, it's one of the requisite things of, of becoming a successful pilot. Well, if they wouldn't put these buoys so far out there, maybe you'd have more room. Well, that, those buoys indicate, uh, Steve, the, the navigable port, part of the water. Uh, there's not enough water to float your toe outside of these red buoys. Uh -huh. So therefore, you must keep it in to the, uh, inside the channel line. Your boat shapes around and finally takes the shape of the shore below the bend. And at this point, you, you come full ahead on your boat and take the swing out of it. You steer back toward the shore, more or less, to stop it swinging. It sets you out a little bit. Then you progress on down the straight current, on down into the Arkansas span of the Greenville Bridge. Uh -huh. Suppose it looks like there's more room here. Maybe get through there. Well, uh, Steve, it is, this way. Uh, in this stage of water, when you have the boys out above the bridge, uh, the main uh, velocity of the current travels through the Arkansas span, which causes to be a stronger draft and a stronger current through there. If you try to shove out this way, you see what would happen. Here's your current all coming down here against you. And after you come around that boy, if you shove out, the, the whole toe would have a tendency to drop down on this Arkansas pier of the channel span unless you was lucky enough to shove out farther enough and yeah. it makes a lot of guesswork out of it. Well, let's not make any guesses then, huh? <laughs> let's <laughs> go right on through that Arkansas span. When you pass the Greenville Bridge, everybody feels fine. Storeboat came out and brought cigars and soft drinks. Now you can settle back. Watch the towns go by. Only 300 miles to go. 300 miles to New Orleans. Well, we met almost everybody on this boat, the cook, everybody. But there's one thing, that's that the pilot is the main guy. Mississippi is his river, his highway, his friend, and sometimes his enemy. So down the river we will go, but we'll not go alone. We carry a crew of 17. They call the Truman boat their home, they call this boat their home. So wherever I go and whatever I see, even at my own back door, I find a lot to interest me. Let's go and find some more, some more. Let's go and find some more. And wherever you are and whatever you see, even in your own backyard, use your curiosity to find things. The preceding program was distributed by the Educational Television and Radio Center. This is National Educational Television.